Hi everyone, welcome to this Rails API tutorial. Rails is famous for allowing developers to build UI-based applications quickly, but Rails is also a great choice for building APIs. In my opinion, Rails is the fastest way to ship APIs. This tutorial will teach you everything you need to know. I'm going to build Streak. It'll be a payments API to rival Stripe. The same functionality, but better in every way. I plan on dominating the market by undercutting Stripe's prices and putting AI powered buzzwords on product pages. It's going to have endpoints for listing, creating and modifying payments and a lot of other things too. First, we need a new Rails app, but we don't want a regular Rails app, we want an API. The Rails generator command has a dash dash API option for scaffolding API apps. To build Rails APIs, you don't have to use the dash dash API option. I'm using it here because I know for certain this application won't have a front end, but API endpoints can be added to regular Rails apps. The content of this tutorial works for regular and API only applications. Now we have an app, let's jump into building an endpoint. First, we need a root. I'll seed into the project and open it in VS Code. And I'll open Roots RB. If you are new to Rails, the router is responsible for taking incoming requests and dispatching them to controllers. And the router works based on what's defined in this roots RB file. We can use the resources method to generate RESTful resources for our payments. This method will generate seven RESTful actions, but for now let's restrict it to just index. In REST API terms, this would be get payments. Don't worry if you're not familiar with the term REST, we'll cover it later on in this course. Now we need a controller to handle the requests. I'll use the Rails generates command and I'll ask Rails to generate a controller, which I'll call payments controller. And I'll also tell Rails to build an index action. I'll jump back to VS Code and open up that new file. If you've done any Rails programming before, this will look familiar. The only difference here is that if I open up application controller, we see it inherits from action controller API instead of action controller base. And this is one of the effects of creating a Rails API only application using the dash dash API flag. Action controller API gives us all the Rails goodness we expect without the stuff we don't need. For those not familiar with Rails, the inheritance is very powerful and fundamental to how Rails works. Methods for rendering API responses, for example, are inherited by default, so we can easily use them. Now, back in our payments controller, let's update the index action to return a response. For now, I'll use head OK. This is a very simple HTTP response, which doesn't return any API data. It just returns a successful 200 response code. Now let's test it out. I'll start the server and I'll jump over to the console and I'll execute a curl request against localhost port 3000, which is the default Rails port. And the root is slash payments. And I'll add the dash V flag so that we can see a verbose uh, output of the request and response. And there we go. You can see we've got a 200 OK response uh, back from our Rails API server. Our API is working, but it's not very useful. It doesn't return any data. Let's update the endpoint to return a list of payments from the database. We can also add a post payments endpoint 
to allow users to create payments. First, we need to generate a model. We'll call it payment and give it two fields. So I'll use the generator to generate a model called payment and I'll give it two fields amount, which will be a decimal and description, which is a string. This generates a bunch of files. There are some tests, which aren't important for now. There is the model file itself, and there's also a migration file. Let's jump over to VS Code and have a look at the migration file. The migration describes the table we want to create, as well as the fields with the relevant types. And Rails also adds a timestamp in by default. We also have the model, the payment model. And that is simply an empty class for now, which inherits from uh, application record. If I jump over to the terminal, we can run the migration with Rails DB migrate. This will effectively run a SQL create table operation on our local database to, as it says here, create the payments table. If you are new to Rails, you may be wondering how these migrations run. Where is the database? Well, every new Rails app comes pre-configured with SQLite. If I jump back to VS Code and I open the Explorer, I can scroll to DB and you can see here that we have a development.sqlite3 file. VS Code won't show me because it's encoded, but this is a database. This is effectively a single file database saved on my local machine. Now let's update the controller to return a list of payments from the database. Instead of head, we can use render and we'll render a JSON object, which will be an, act, uh, an active record relation object. So effectively we're using the payment class and I'll return all payments from the database. I can test this out using curl. I'll do curl, in fact, let me use my history, curl to localhost slash payments. This works, but it's hard to see because I get a an empty list back. And that's because there's nothing in the database. So to fix that, I can open the console. That's uh, BIM Rails console or BIM Rails C for short. And what I'm going to do is manually create two payments in the database. So I'll say payment create, and uh, I'll give it a description. Uh, did I spell that wrong? Descript. A description of, let's say I'm buying an Apple MacBook and it costs 1600. And I'll also create a small payment for a, let's say a Starbucks. Now I can exit the console and rerun the curl request. And there we go. You can see I get an array with two objects inside it, the MacBook and the Starbucks. So get payments is now a fully functional API endpoint, but streak is not ready for its IPO just yet. We're able to list payments, but not create them. Let's add an endpoint for that now. A conventional rest endpoint would be post payments. I'll jump over to VS Code and add a root. Adding a root is easy. We just need to update the existing resource to include create. A little tip here. If you're unsure which routes are available in the app, what you can do is jump over to the terminal, 
and run Rails routes. And then you can grep for a specific route that you're interested in. So in this case, I want to check the payments routes. And you can see here that we've got the index now. Not interesting. So we've got the, the endpoint here, which lists all of the payments. We've got the post endpoint that we just added, which will allow us to create a new payment. But then we've also got this payments index, which is a bug. So uh, doing this route search has actually uncovered a bug. Let's see why that's there. I'll jump back over to the routes file. I think when we generated, when we ran Rails generate to generate a controller, it's added this route in by default, which we don't need because we've got the uh, resources here. So I'm going to remove that line and save. Now for the new create endpoint, we need a controller action. So let's jump over to the controller. We have our index action, and now we need a create action. In the method body, I will hard code a payment creation. So I'll use the payments uh, class, I'll call create on it. I'll pass in the, an amount, which I'll hard code, and I'll pass in a description, which I'll hard code as well. To make this work properly, I need to use params instead of uh, hard coding these values. So what I can do is from params, which is a, you can think of it as a, a magic object at this point, which Rails populates for us. I can uh, call params and from there I can access amount and I can do the same thing for the description. And this works if I make a request to post payments now it would create a record using the params which are specified. However, there are a few problems. Firstly, it doesn't handle failure very well. If the params are incorrect, it will raise an exception rather than returning a nice error to the user. So let's improve that now. What we can do is change the payment creation call to be an initialization only. So instead of creating a new object, a new payments object, it's just going to initialize one. Then we'll attempt to save the payment in an if block. So I'll say payment.save. And in order to do that, I need to save the object into a holder variable. If the payment is saved successfully, then I'll render a response. So I'll say render JSON payment. So I'm asking Rails to return in the JSON body, render out the payment itself. And I'll say, I'll give it a status of created. And this is a, this created is a HTTP status code. So Rails will read this and give it the correct HTTP status code. Don't worry about that too much for now. I'll explain that in a, a later video. If this save is not successful, so this is the else case, I will render errors. So instead of returning the payment object, object itself, I'll return some errors. And don't worry about how this works too much for now, but Rails will automatically populate errors on an object if you try and save it and it fails. Again, for the status, I'll use this time an error status. So I'll say, unprocessable entity. This is a 426, I believe. Um, so I'll explain uh, HTTP status codes later on, but effectively it's, it tells the client that um, there's been an, an error. And there we go, I'll close off the code block. There's one other thing which we can improve with this code, and that is pulling values directly out of the params hash works but the syntax is outdated and it doesn't work well for large objects. So if this payment uh, object becomes very big, we'd have to remember each time to pull out the field that we want and this line's going to get very long. So instead, I would recommend doing a mass update and using strong params. So what that means is I'll replace all of these params with um, a new method, which we're going to create. I'll call it 
payment params. And down here, I'll create a private method called payment params. And I'll paste in the um, params from above. And what we do is we use this um, row syntax where we um, describe the object structure correctly. So we say it must have a, um, it must be a payment uh, object at the top level. And then inside that, we can permit um, specific params that we want. So we'll permit this uh, amount and also description. So now whenever an object is um, posted to our browser application, we check that the it's a payment object and, and we permit these two fields, amount and description. Okay, let's test it out. I'm going to make a request to the server, make a post request. Instead of using curl like I did before, I'm going to use postman just because it's easier, especially when working with request bodies. I'll switch to that now. I'll uh, leave instructions for how you can download postman. So here I'm making a post request to localhost port 3000 slash payment. I'll pass in an amount of 50 and a description of hello YouTube. And there we go. We have a 201 created. The amount is correct. The description is correct. Hello YouTube. And in fact, if I jump over to the server, you can see that um, we had a successful crate with the amount that I just specified in the description that I just specified. So there we go. Our endpoint is now working. We can correctly um, request payments from our database and insert payments into our database. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.